Hey guys, welcome to the book club. I hope you're doing well. In this episode, I wanted to speak about Charles Dickens' book, A Christmas Carol, and some of the lessons that we can take away from it, moving into the Christmas holiday season, and then going into um, 2021, a new year, uh, fresh life, you know, and new opportunities. And so I think what this book um, for me, what it tells us is it's a book about change. At the beginning of the book, we find Scrooge in a particular state. You know, his life is a certain way and his character is pretty fixed in place. But throughout the experiences that he has uh, throughout the book, you know, being visited by all the, um, the spirits of Christmas, he, he learns some lessons and does some introspection. And he ultimately changes his ways and becomes a new man at the end of the book. But before we get into the book, I just want to share a few facts about Charles Dickens, the author. Dickens was born on the 7th of February in 1812 in Portsmouth, Hampshire, England. He had ten children. Uh, he wrote A Christmas Carol in 1843 while he was living in London. And his other notable works are The Pickwick Papers, Oliver Twist, Nicholas Nickleby, David Copperfield, A Tale of Two Cities and Great Expectations. Uh, Charles Dickens died on the 9th of June in 1870, aged 58, in Higham, Kent, England. If you've not ever read the actual original book, but only seen some film and cartoon adaptations, uh, I recommend there's a, a link in the description that will take you to my other channel, uh, and there you can find the full audio ebook of A Christmas Carol, and I always love to get back to the source. I think the book is uh, is the is the best place to find where the story lies and so um when you go and actually read the book you might find the language is quite peculiar and it's a bit different and that's because it was written about 180 years ago in a completely different world in a different time the world that charles dickens was living in was victorian uh, england in london you know 180 years ago and the and the book really gives us a window into that point of time in in london and it gives us a great idea of how life uh, would have been for the english people living in london in, in around the 1850s and so for me one of the the main lessons that i took away from the reading um, is that how we how we are in ourselves, our character, uh, how we go about interacting with the world? It has a very a very important impact on the people around us. You know, our friends and family, and our work colleagues, and then the greater world. And we see this very clearly in the opening pages of uh, of a Christmas Carol when we meet Scrooge and see him interacting with uh, some of the people that come into his counting house. So yeah, early in the book, uh, we meet Scrooge's nephew who comes into the counting house, uh, meets uh, his uncle Scrooge and says, Uncle, come, come and have Christmas with us, you know, come and spend Christmas with us. And uh, it's very early on the book where we first hear uh, Ebenezer Scrooge use the terms bah, humbug. And um, this is how important the works of Dickens were, because obviously everyone knows that word humbug. You know, a person who doesn't keep Christmas very merrily, you know, is a humbug. And also, uh, you know, someone who's miserly, selfish, you know, um, self-absorbed. We use the term Scrooge, don't we? So these these two terms, humbug and Scrooge, is um, it comes directly from Charles Dickens, and and it's such an important works of literature. And then um, uh, there's a bit of a back and forth between um, uh, I think his name's Fred, the nephew, between uh, Scrooge and Fred, the nephew, and he said, you know, come and spend Christmas with us. And Scrooge is saying, ah, oh, well, Christmas, Christmas, and then. Um, his nephew says, oh, d don't be cross, uncle, don't be cross, because he is a very cross man. And there's a great uh, quote, Scrooge's response to his nephew when he says, don't get cross. And, and Scrooge says, what else can I be when I live in such a world of fools as this? Merry Christmas out upon Merry Christmas. What's Christmas time to you but a time for paying bills without money? A time for finding yourself a year older, but not an hour richer. And in the same paragraph, he goes on to say, If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be bored in his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. So very early on in the opening pages, we get an idea of Scrooge's character 
and that he's not a very Christmassy person, he's not a very merry person, you know, he's quite an angry, impatient, stingy person, and this, um, this theme goes out throughout the first couple of chapters of the book, until we see Scrooge have his first meeting with his old um, colleague, Jacob Marley. And when Jacob Marley comes into Scrooge's house, you know, as a ghost, a phantom, and uh, interacts with him and, and shares some of um, some of his experiences of life after death, you know, what he's experienced as a ghoul, a phantom, uh, we see Scrooge being Im impacted by this experience, but he, he's not ready to change his ways yet. And so this is a, a great uh, part of the book for me is that even someone as old as Scrooge, I imagine he's in his, his 80s, um, you know, the character, even someone with a personality as, as hard formed as that, you know, set in his ways, he's got his ways of doing things and he's not interested in changing, even someone like that, you know, if the motivation is strong enough, if the reason for changing, you know, is clear enough, then I think anyone can make a change. And if Scrooge can become a new man over the period of one evening of this psychedelic, you know, um, trips with the Christmas spirits, then I think anyone can make that change. And so, yeah, we get to the main body of the story is Scrooge's trips with the, um, the three Christmas spirits, the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, and the ghost of Christmas future. And they all have their lessons to teach Scrooge um, about why he is where he is and some of the difficult experiences he had in his past which caused him to make the choices he did. Uh, the ghost of Christmas present where he goes and visits um, his, uh, his employees, house you know with his family and 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 the fact that it doesn't matter where you are in life whatever your station is when he goes to visit his um his employee and he's got his disabled son tiny tim and they they're not got much money they still doing their best to have a great time and i think this touches scrooge very deeply and then we move on to the the ghost of christmas future and in this scene we see you know scrooge is dead and everyone's not really, they don't really care that he's died. Uh, there's a group of like um, thieves who have gone into his house and they've they've unwrapped the curtains that he was um, wrapped up in, you know, his dead corpse. They, they're saying, nah, the, the uh, you know, the curtains are too good to, to wrap around his dead corpse. So I nicked them. How much are you going to give me for them? And, and there's a scene about this as well. And obviously Scrooge sees this. And he, he is he's, uh, greatly impacted by what he sees. And so these three experiences together, they occur over one evening. And um, yeah, there's a profound part where Scrooge wakes up and then he realises that, oh, it's, it's all happened over one evening and it's still Christmas morning. So I can still, you know, I can, I can still make a change and, and go about doing Christmas. And what he does is he, he buys his, the prize turkey for his employees, um, for his employees' family, I think the main thing that we can take away from uh, from the story Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol is that no matter where we are in life, no matter how many struggles and suffering and uh, hardships and difficult times we've had to overcome, there is always an opportunity to make a change. There's always an opportunity to try and make ourselves better, make our lives better. And all we need to find is the motivation and the reason for making that change. And clearly, Scrooge had a very clear one, you know, with these spirits coming to visit him, impacted him profoundly. But all we need to do is spend a few moments, uh, five or ten minutes, uh, doing introspection. You can just Google introspective practices or introspection practices. And that will help you to look inside, look at your character, look at your life. And it will help you. Again, you might be saintly and so you don't need to make any changes at all. Just keep going on. But most of us, we've got certain flaws, certain character traits that maybe by removing or improving, we might make ourselves and the world around us a better place. So that's my commentary to Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. I hope you enjoyed that commentary and benefited from some of the lessons that you can get and ultimately go over and uh, read the whole book. If you did enjoy it, uh, smash that uh, subscribe button and the bell and hit like to let me know that you enjoyed it and uh, yeah finally I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I hope 
some of us can take this transformative energy and do what we need to do um, so no matter what is occurring in the world around us we can take control of how we react to it and um, yeah have a great 2021 guys take care now i'll see you soon